Hello. Okay, hopefully that first part of our lesson went well. Um, yeah, I don't think it should take you too, 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 too long to do that, since especially since I gave you the pages where to write down those couple of definitions. Um, yeah, okay, so that is the first thing that we should have done. Um, I'm just debating if I want you to send me a picture of you finishing that. You know what, I'm just gonna say it's okay. Um, you don't have to send me a picture of that because I don't fully know if everyone's even able to print it off. So it is suggested, it's going to help you if you do that, but I'm not gonna say it's like a thing for homework to do. Um, okay, good stuff. So today we are getting into our new unit. So you need to go to a new page in your math notebook. And again, remember that if you are running out of space, um, your mom or dad or whoever is able to go to the school and you can get a new notebook. Miss Jan has a whole stack of our like grade six grid ones at reception with like grade six math label on it. So if you need one, um, maybe flip ahead a little bit. Like if you only have two pages, you might need to think a little bit ahead and then ask your parents to go get one um, so you're not out of space by the time that you actually need it. Um, okay, so here we go. Today's topic is called, or today's, I guess, like new unit is called data analysis and probability. So this could look really big at the top of a page and then we should have today's date, which is May 27th, written as well. And this is coincidentally our seventh unit. And coincidentally, it is chapter number seven in our textbook. So there you go. Okay, this is your I can statement for today. It is called displaying data. Okay. And interestingly, this is actually an I can statement from grade five and a little bit from grade four as well, actually. So I don't think you're gonna find today to be too challenging, but the interesting thing is that on, like if we were doing a PAT, whatever, they do this thing where they like go back and they know that like just because this isn't in grade six, they know that you should know it from grade five. So there aren't many questions like in the textbook specifically on bar graphs, but we're gonna do a little bit of work today with um, a couple pages instead. And I think you guys are gonna find them not to be too hard. Okay, so this is the I can statement. I can create and interpret bar graphs to draw conclusions. Okay, so you can create, so make up your own label, which is like maybe there's some parts missing or maybe it's like the labeling is also part of the creation and then interpret. So that means you're gonna look at a bar graph and then figure out, well, what's happening? What is? What are some conclusions I can draw from this data? And the interpretation is what we're gonna be starting with. And then the second part of today, which again, all of this should be review, is going to be the creation, which includes labeling of some bar graphs. Okay, again, pause me if you have needing more time to do this. Okay, oh, interpret bar. Sorry, we're doing line graphs later. Line graphs is the main thing for grade six. Okay, so here we go. If we were in school, I would have these nice little things printed out for you, but we're not. So if you want to sketch this in, you can, okay? You don't have to though, like if you don't want to. Um, but it shouldn't be too hard to do like, okay, nicest fruit, apple, okay, orange. This is just like a survey that somebody did to figure out what people think is the nicest fruit maybe to have as their recess snack or something. Um, okay, so bar graphs. There's gonna be a couple different types of graphs that we're going to be reviewing, but today we're just going to be doing bar graphs, which is, I think, among the easiest. And you should be have been doing this for a couple of years now. Okay, so a couple of points for bar graphs. They involve categories, okay? So in this case, what would be the categories of the data that's that's shown on our bar graph well the categories would be the types of fruit and there would be an apple category an orange category i guess there's only like you know a couple types of like apples and oranges but those are the categories of what somebody would choose okay so categories rather than numbers note that here for a bar graph we do not have um numbers for this like for this part um, okay, so examples of categories could be, okay, so people, okay, so maybe we have different categories of people, like 
we would show a bar graph for the people who wore their spirit day shirts on for our house league. So that could be like people. Maybe we have types of ice cream would be the categories. In this case, it is types of fruit. What else could you think of? What else could be a category that could be used for a bar graph? What else could we use? Hmm. Okay. Um, you can maybe comment on that underneath even in our post today. Okay, the next thing is, um, okay, now this is kind of a key thing for a bar graph, is you can count a whole number in one or more categories. So that means we can count a whole number, okay, of people um, who like grapes. We can count a whole number of people who like blueberries, kiwi fruit, okay? So it's like a whole, it's counting whole numbers, usually best for a bar graph rather than like fractions or decimals. Okay, but not always, but it, it can, it can count a whole number. Okay, the next thing is, oh, this is super important, is the bars are separated to show that the data is discrete, okay? So this is actually one of your, if you did the title page, your, the bell should be going off in your head right now because we did discrete as one of our terms. So <clears throat> this is super important when you're creating your bar graphs, is there should be a space Okay, notice that the bar graphs in this example are not touching, okay? When we do double bar graphs, so say we had like boys who like apples, girls who like apples, then we might have boys and the girls like bars would be next to each other, so without a space. But when we're doing different categories, it's important to separate the data by using a space, okay? So, when the bars are separated, this shows the data is discrete. So discrete data, I'd be asking you right now if we were in class, who knows what discrete data is? It should be a review. So discrete data is where the categories are separate and it's not continuous, okay? So basically what that means is that you can't have like somebody, like you either for this survey, you're either choosing you like apple or you're choosing that you like banana. You're not going to say that you like um, half half. That's not possible. So it's separate and it's just like a category. You can just like check it off. It's done. Um, when we're doing line graphs, it is the opposite of this. So it shows continuous data, which I'll get into um, later. But for now, we just need to know it's like a simple category. It's either check you like it or no, you don't. No half numbers, no decimals. Okay. Oh yeah, this is either super important thing for discrete data. Okay, so really make sure you have this written down. So if it's discrete data, we can put the information in a different order. So that means I don't have to have apple first if it's a category. I could have put kiwi fruit first. I could have put grapes in the middle. I could have put banana last. It does not matter the order of which the information or the categories appear, okay? That'd be the same thing for over here. If we did like people, my example from earlier. Okay, shirts for um, spear day. By the way, PS, which is tomorrow. You guys can wear your house day shirts or your um, club, your house league shirts. So yeah, it wouldn't matter if we put like cobras and then like, or um, like, yeah, or then like the, or sorry, not cobras, scorpions, that's old. <laughs> um, scorpions and then falcons. It wouldn't matter which order I put it in. Same thing with types of ice cream, right? Could do it like chocolate, strawberry, vanilla, chocolate chip, mint, whatever. Doesn't matter the order, okay? Alrighty. Oh yeah, last point for today is our data could be either vertical, so our bars could be going either vertically, so up and down, or they could be going horizontally. So in this case, I chose this one that's horizontal because it's a little bit more obscure to look at, not something that you might quite be initially familiar with or be as like commonly seen with a bar graph, but it can be in either direction. It doesn't have to be only one or the other. Okay, so um, that, math geniuses, is it for today. That's all that you need to know and then our homework is going to be on Seesaw, okay? Um, so it is, let me just get this up here. Okay, here it is. All right, so it's not hard. It's actually like mainly review. Um, okay, so here we go. It is, I'm just gonna kind of move myself so I can explain this to you a little bit further here. Okay, yeah. So this one, okay, so this is interpreting. Okay, so you just have to like basically look at the bar graph and then answer the questions 
pretty simple. How many pounds of new newspapers does Miss Tobias class recycle? Okay, so where's Miss Tobias class? How many pounds did they recycle? Okay, so yeah, okay, so you have to look at the scale here and notice that for this one's vertically aligned, right? We could have any of the classes in whatever order. And then you have to read the bar graph. So this one, this looks like 240, 260, but then it's halfway between 260 and 280. So this should be 270, okay? There we go, first answer. Um, okay, yeah, so there you go, just to answer those questions. And then this next one, baseball bar graph. Okay, you can answer those questions too. So same thing, it's just interpreting a bar graph. This one's actually easier. I should have put that one first. If you want, you can do them in any order. Um, it's seriously simple. Then the next thing is, okay, now we're creating a bar graph, okay? So Albert takes a survey of about the little pets grown by his friends and records their data. Okay, using the information, write a title for the bar graph. That's important. What would be an appropriate title? So the one we did over here was nicest fruit. What could be an appropriate title? Our, there's a couple things you could choose. Um, but it has to explain what we're actually seeing, right? And then the next thing is you have to label the axes, okay? So for this one, you know what? You could do it as horizontal or you could do it as vertical. Doesn't matter, it's up to you because it could go in either way. Just make sure that you label the axes, okay? Um, and then you have to make an appropriate scale for the graphs. So this is kind of looping back to what we even touched on a little bit in our previous, um, in like when we were doing um, the ordered pairs. So, okay, what would be an appropriate scale for this? Well, the highest one is 18. I don't think we have 18 spots. So we have to be thinking a little bit more strategically about what we would want to label them as. Remember also, super important, what is this point right here? that should be zero, okay? That should always be zero. So you do not put two at this spot right here. This has to be zero. Then this would be two, okay? Um, I would think it's probably a little bit more standard to do the categories across the bottom and then the numbers, like the values up the y-axis, but it doesn't matter. You could do them in either way that you want to. Just please also remember for the bar graphs, what did I say over here about the uh, discrete data? What do we have to do? Are they allowed to be touchy touchy or no? Let's see if we can remember that. Um, okay, then the next one is this one. Okay, so one more type that you can create, just a little bit practice with like a different scale. You could do this one vertically or horizontally, same deal. Okay, and then these ones are a bit more analysis of a graph. Okay, again, oh, it's still creation. Oh, okay, this one's actually kind of easier to do because you don't have to, you already have the categories and the number of votes listed. So that's actually like simple. I could have put that one even before. And then one more, which is just interpretation. So it's not really that bad. And then one more again, which is interpretation. And then another one, which is interpretation, okay? So I'm gonna put all of this up on Edmodo, or sorry, on Seesaw, but you don't need to do it all, okay? I'm gonna say you have to choose one from one to two, okay? You could choose one between three and four, so one of the creations. Um, let's say you have to do five, because that one's actually pretty easy. You're just like drawing the bars. And then, you can choose one from six to seven to eight, okay? So your choice. So there's really four pages that you have to do, but I'm giving you an op, like a list of like eight or nine that you can choose from, okay? But it has to be within those certain categories. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Good luck. And yeah, that's it. That's all you have to do for math today. Except if you have another show that you know <laughs> from before the break. That's number one thing on your priority list. Okay.